Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel for the vehicle. So this is going to be an in-depth look at how all of the different buttons work, as well as the paddle shifters and the sticks. So we'll actually start off on the stick. So the very left one is going to be our, so obviously our turning stick. We can flash our high beams out. And then there's a button on the very tip of the stick. And that's going to be for turning our lane keeping system on or off. So you can kind of see that one turning on or off as we go. So when we see how the lanes going showing up there, we know that the system itself is actually activated, but it doesn't actually physically turn on until we hit about 60 kilometers an hour. Those are going to go green, letting us know the system's activated, and it's going to recognize what's going on with our lane. So left versus right, so those will highlight green, letting us know. And that's going to work one of three different ways. So first way, if we start veering over into a lane without signaling, we'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if we're running over a rumble pavement. Way number two is it'll gently nudge us back into our lane, and way number three, it'll do a mixture of both of them. The stick on the right hand side is going to be for our windshield wipers. We can control the front wiper and then we've got a little button on the tip of that right stick in order to be able to control the wiper in the rear. So we've got quite a few different options. And we've also got our paddle shifters in the vehicle. So paddle shifter on the left is going to be our minus. Paddle shifter on the right is our plus. So we can easily change gears out as necessary. The Nautilus does feature an 8-speed automatic transmission in both the 2.0-liter and the 2.7-liter turbocharged engine. So we can easily adjust gears as necessary. Taking a peek at the pad on the left hand side, we can use that in order to change between songs or radio stations so you can see those active sources changing out. We can press and hold if we wanted to seek that way to change between stations. So you can just kind of see it going crazy off to the side there and that's because we're pressing and holding in order to be able to change out stations. So we could technically if we want to use the tuning rocker down this way to change stations out. We can also just press the voice command prompt on the top of the steering wheel in order to be able to change out using our voice instead. On the left hand side you can see there we do also have our audio switch so we can increase decrease audio as necessary and then we've also got our steering wheel uh, buttons there for the adaptive cruise control system so the adaptive cruise control system is fantastic it's literally a set and forget it cruise and it's really straightforward to use so we can easily turn the system on or off by pressing this button along the bottom you can see there that it turns on and off as necessary. We know the system is on when we start to see those lane markings. And we can control those markings by pressing the button there. And that's going to be our distance indicator. So how close or how far are we away from the vehicle that's in front of us? This one is our lane centering system. So it's the lane keeping system to the like 10th degree. So the reason why the lane keeping system nudges us into our lane. Whereas the lane centering system is not fully self-driving, but it's going to keep you balanced in your lane as you go. We can increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. Looking on the right hand side, same idea, series of different buttons and things like that. This one is going to be our basic back button for that center screen. We can go up and down to flip between different pages. We can see that along the right hand side. So we've got our fuel economy, tire pressure, and a number of other options. Voice command prompt. When we press that button, that's going to pull up this basic assistant there. So we can th do things like pair a phone up. We can change. To, we can navigate. We can change radio stations and a number of other things strictly using our voice. If we were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could also press this in order to activate our Google or our Siri assistant. The buttons on the right hand side do a few different things. So we can either answer or hang up on a phone call. We can change our display. We can change our audio sources there so we can look at different audio. So we pull that one up. So we've got our presets, AM, FM, etc. If we had a USB stick with MP3s on there plugged in, that would show up. If we had a phone connected, that would show up. So we have a lot of flexibility. And we also do have, so our display options. So we take a look. We've got our gauges, trip info, and our fuel. And then we've also got a basic setup. So if we go to our gauges, we can see we've got our eco coach as well as our tachometer. So if we want a little bit more of a split screen, we can set that one up. And then same idea, we can adjust it as necessary. And then our trip, fuel, and info counter. So all of the different screens that we saw in that main menu, we can also adjust which ones, which ones are showing. So we, if, let's say if we add in seatbelts and power distribution, if we move back, and look at this, we have a number of other pages that are available. So we've got our trip counters. If we ever need to reset a trip counter, this button that we use to go up and down, we just press it in. So just do a quick little press and hold. And it's reset, so it's really that simple. Moving down to other options, so we've got our base menu, oh, there we go, tire pressure. We've got our power distribution, so we can see what's going on with each wheel as we go. And then we've also got our seatbelts, so whatever seatbelts are currently plugged in, they would show up there and as we go. So it's nice that you don't have to kind of turn around and see who's actually got their seatbelt on or not. Back to display, so we do have some different options as to what's showing up there. Our display setup, so we've got our distance. Do we want to have kilometers, liters per hundred, miles per gallon? What temperature unit do we have? Same idea with tire pressure and language. We can switch between English, French, and Spanish. That's going to be the basic for the display setup. Moving down, we've got some other options. So the one on the bottom right side is going to be for our navigation. 
So we can look at your home address if you've got that one saved in, previous destinations, which as of right now we haven't searched for anything, but we've got some favorites and then point of interest icons that are nearby. So we can look for gas stations, food, ATM, things like that. And then we can also just simply press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. Navigate to a gas station. Which item would you like? Okay, hey, so it gives us a number of other options. So we can literally just say which one we'd like, or we can just press. Starting route to Pioneer. And as you can see there, so really straightforward. Or we can also navigate this way if we wanted to. So. Traffic laws. Be alert and use <laughs> commands while driving. So we know that we're going to this Pioneer. Meters at the end of the road, turn right to Kingston Road. And it's really neat because we can see exactly what's going on in the directions right through this middle screen. We press that navigation button again and we can cancel the route out if we wanted to. So the route is now canceled. So literally is that simple. And then we also have this button along the bottom left hand side and same idea, a series of different options. Firstly, we've got our drive control. So we, ha we can show what's going on with our handling when we're in our regular drive mode. Do we want it to be comfort, normal or a sport steering? Ooh, this is a great song. I'm just gonna crank the volume here for a second. absolutely incredible. We do have three different options for the speaker setup inside of the Nautilus, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But back to the drive control. So we've got our handling in sport as well as our performance in sport. So what kind of performance do we want to have in the vehicle? Honestly, if you're going to be using the sport control down on the side there, just leave it in the sport setup. It is an incredible setup when you do it that way. Moving back, we've got our driver assistance settings. So our blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Cross traffic alert, if we go to back up and a vehicle's coming perpendicular, it'll beep at us and let us know. Cruise control, we've got our normal versus adaptive cruise. And adaptive, we saw there, is our set it and forget it cruise. Or you can flip it up to the old school style cruise if you want it to. We've got driver alert, so if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling too many times, eventually we're going to get a counter and something letting us know we should probably take a break. We've got our lane keeping system, which we already heard works three different ways. So alert, aid, or both. And then the intensity of the steering wheel shake. So a high normal or a low shake. We've got our pre-collision assist. So if the vehicle senses that there's a potential collision, are we gonna get an indication letting us know the distance of that one? Will the vehicle emergency brake for us or evasive steering, which puts our steering wheel into hypersensitivity mode. You've got a few different options available and you do have the flexibility of turning these systems off if you really didn't like them. I know some people aren't a fan, Trailer sway control is great, so if the vehicle senses there's trailer sway going on, automatically apply engine braking to get that sway under control. And then we can also show the speed in miles and kilometers per hour. So we can show them both if we're going down to the States, or if you're back up in Canada, either way. Vehicle lights, a series of different options. So we've got our auto high beams, so if the vehicle senses an oncoming vehicle, it'll dim your high beams and then bring them right back up again. Our auto lamp delay, when we go to lock the vehicle using the key fob, do the lamp stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds? And then we've got our welcome lighting on the outside of the vehicle as we approach. Oil life, few different options there also, so we can do a reset if we're changing the oil ourselves. Wipers, we've got our courtesy wipe, so if we've got our windshield wipers going, courtesy wipe's gonna take an extra second and then go one more time to get rid of any excess liquid. Rain sensing wipers available as a default, and then our rear wiper when we're in reverse. So if we've got our front wipers going and we put the vehicle into reverse, it's automatically gonna turn on our rear windows, our rear wipers for us on top of that. We've got our alarms, so when we go to lock the vehicle, are all sensors active or just the outside alarms? And then you can also have the vehicle ask you when you exit. All, active sens all sensors active is a great one because if your windows are rolled down and your vehicle's locked, if somebody reaches in, the alarm's gonna go off. We've got our 30 minute max idle, so if you're just hovering and idling, you're at a drive-in movie theater, whatever the case may be, you can limit it so the vehicle turns off 30 minutes max, or you can have it so it just stays on. We've got our easy entry exit. So when we go to unlock a vehicle to get into the door, so for the driver passenger seat, it's literally gonna lower the seat down and bring it back in order to get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. Some options for our locks. We've got our auto unlock when we go to stop the vehicle. We've got some different feedback options there as well. So we've got our audible and exterior light. So as we go to lock the vehicle, etc. cetera. Miss lock chirps. So if we don't properly shut doors, we're gonna get a double chirp letting us know that we haven't shut everything properly. When we go to unlock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? We've got our mirrors, so our auto folding mirrors. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want those mirrors moving in? So do we want them power folding in automatically for us? Power lift gate, we can disable the switch on the outside of the vehicle. Remote start, we can turn the system off, but if we have it on, what happens when we remote start? Is the climate gonna be based off of our last setting or is it gonna let the vehicle determine what the temperature should be? 
Some idea with our seats and wheels. Do we want the vehicle to determine if the heated seats, etc., should be turned on? And then the duration of the start, so 5, 10, or 15 minutes. Moving down, we've also got our window buttons, so we can actually use the key fob in order to remote open and close the windows. Let's hop outside and see how that process works. So using the key fob in order to be able to roll the windows up and down is very straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the unlock button twice. On that second button press, we're going to hold. So we're going to go one, two, and hold. As you can see there, both windows down. We can press lock in order to stop it part way. And then in order to lock it, we just press that lock button twice. Same idea, second button press, we hold. One, two, and hold. And up they go. We can release it and it'll go up all the way. And it literally is that simple. So it's great that we've got that option as a default and it is really straightforward in order to be able to use it. That's going to be the basics there. We've got a My Key setting. What the My Key setting does is it gives us the flexibility to create limitations for our key fob. So if you're lending the vehicle out to a child, you don't want them speeding excessively, you can lock it out and just using a specific key fob to do that. Other thing there is that if you're bringing your vehicle into a dealership for servicing and you don't want them to you know, drive excessively like a maniac, it, it can happen. You can create a key that you give to them. Essentially, you can look at it as your valet key at that point. That's going to be the basics for our setting. And then as you saw there, so we do have a series of different buttons and different options and things like that. But that's a look at the steering wheel and that cluster screen for the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus.